Well, welcome everyone to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. I'm Bart Berger, and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Profit Break. Thank you all for joining us. Our mission here at the university is to enrich people's lives personally and professionally, and the Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce costs, enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Now, if you're joining the Profit Break for the first time, welcome. We're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes, and you'll be well on your way to improving your profitability. Today we're joined by Mr. Matt Heller. Matt has spent 30 plus years in the attraction industry for both operations and human resources. He is the founder of Performance Optimist Consulting and author of two books, The Myth of Employee Burnout and All Clear, A Practical Guide for First-Time Leaders and the People Who Support Them, which we both proudly have those in our Bowling University bookstore. He also serves as an outside consulting partner for Amusement Advantage. They are BPAA's smart buy solution for measuring the guest experience. Matt, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Bart, I'm so excited. Yeah, awesome. Well, hey, look, I know that uh, you've been with us before Bowl Expo, but it's been a little while, and it seems like for me, anything that happened before the pandemic is like ancient history. So uh, let's spend a minute before we jump into our topic and uh, learn a little bit about you and your, uh, your group and what you do. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me uh, today on the Profit Break. Um, my company is Performance Optimist Consulting, and really what I do is kind of derived from the title, right? You know, so everything that we do from a from a business standpoint, from a people standpoint, it's all based on performance. So how are we performing as a leader? How are you, is your team performing? How is your business performing? So what I like to do is work with organizations and really help them make sure that their performance is top notch. So when you think about, again, you know, are your leaders interacting with your teams in the right way? Are you, are you getting the most out of your team? Are your, is your team engaged? So everything sort of on the people side of the business is, is where I focus. And this really comes from, like you said, I've been in the, the attractions industry for a little over 30 years. And it really comes from my experience working in operations and in human resources at various attractions around the world. My last sort of day job was at Universal Studios in Orlando. And what I really learned over the course of that, that uh, career is that I have two passions. Number one is the attractions industry. So bowling and roller coasters and water slides. I love all that stuff, right? But I also love helping people. That's my other my other passion. And so that's really what led to me starting Performance Optimist Consulting and, uh, you know, keeps me going every day. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. And we need that now more than ever coming out of everything we've been through the last couple of years. So before we get topic, topic specific, tell us a little bit about how you partner with Amusement Advantage and what's that relationship? Absolutely. So I've known Scott, the, uh, the founder of Amusement Advantage, for many, many years. And actually, if you'll indulge me, I have a quick, fun uh, networking story. I actually met Scott uh, when I first started working at a, uh, at, a, at a family entertainment center in Connecticut, I was the general manager, and they were already using his mystery shopping um, uh, service. And I thought it was great. I thought, you know, this is before I went to Universal, before I started my own business, and I already sort of had this, this um, desire to train people, and I'd done a lot of that already, and I thought, this is a great springboard and really great information for you know, designing training. What did we see? What did what did the guests see? And so I, I emailed him and I said, what do you think about this? And he says, nah, I don't think it's really right for us to kind of partner together. And I said, okay, well, we got to know each other and we had never met before at that point. We got to know each other over the next 10 years or so. Honestly, you know, meeting at BPAA and IAPA and, and all, the, all the AA conferences, <laughs> And, um, you know, we really got to know each other and, and really started, you know, finding out we had so many things in common. And he said, remember that idea you had like 10 years ago? What do you think if we start that up? So that's what actually led to uh, us working together. And what I get to do now is take those mystery shopping reports that his company provides and really look at trends. So, you know, it's one thing to look at one report and say, okay, well, this is what happened. This is the snapshot that we have of that particular day. And when you look at that over the course of time, you can start to see trends and you can start to see things that, you know, may be happening one day, but not another day. And then they are happening the third day. So if you have three different reports or four or five different reports, you know, sometimes for an operator that can be very overwhelming to look at. So as a third party, I can come in and look at those and kind of look at it from a 30,000 foot view and say, okay, on this day, when somebody came into the bowling center, 
And Bart was outstanding. You know, he was great. He was great with the guests. He was joking with them. You know, he was the outstanding employee. But then this next visit, a couple of weeks later, Bart wasn't so great. So what's the difference? What was happening, you know, differently on those two days? And then you look at another report and Bart was great again. So now again, we start to see trends and that's where we can kind of analyze those trends and figure out what we need to do from a business standpoint. Again, what's the performance level that we need to amplify so that uh, your, your business is doing the best it can do? Yeah, thank you. So, you know, we used to call this customer service. Now we call it the guest experience and this whole idea of uh, measuring it. This topic of guest experience is something that's so simple to understand, but so hard to execute. I mean, why is that? I mean, in your experience, why is something so simple, so difficult? I'm glad you brought this up because I really feel like when we talk about the guest experience, it's so wide ranging. Like, what does this really mean? But then when you get down to the, the essence of what it is, it's honestly a perfect storm. It's a perfect storm of leadership, of team members, of the environment. And there's so many moving pieces that when you try to figure out what is the perfect guest experience for a family coming into the bowling center, well, it could be different for different people. It could be different for people coming in for a birthday party versus a corporate event versus a league versus people coming in just for a Saturday afternoon of bowling. So the experience that people have um, can, can really range based on their, ex, their expectations. And those expectations start probably long before they even get into the center, right? They're looking online, they're reading reviews, they're talking to their friends. So all those things kind of come together to create their expectation. And then when they get there, how does the actual experience meet the expectation? And again, you, you have very different expectations, I think, for different groups. And even, you know, teenagers coming in to bowl for a little while is different than a family with small kids. So when you look at guest experience, yes, you're absolutely right. Let's treat people well and make sure they have a good time. Overarching umbrella topic sounds easy. But when you look at all those different elements, when you look at your team members, you know, having different people on staff every day, you have, um, you know, the environment, you know, how clean is your facility, how, how safe do people feel, that all works into the guest experience. So I think it is that perfect storm of all of those things have to come together for each guest. Yeah, and it's so difficult to measure that and quantify that in this, this nebulous thing called, you know, guest experience there. So. Uh, I, I think we get that. We, we know that it's complicated there. So uh, as small businesses, how do we utilize and, and measure the guest experience? How do we, if, if we're buying in, Matt, we're buying what you're saying, we know it's important, we know we need to do it, you know, how can small businesses like ours, you know, measure the guest experience? It's a great question. I think one of those ways is through, um, you know, amusement advantage, through Smart Buy Partner. Do a, do a mystery shop, right? This is a third party looking at your business. But I also think there's a lot of other ways that you can measure your guest experience. You can obviously just walk around as a business owner, as a leader, walk around, talk to your guests, see what they're doing, see how they're, how they're experiencing your facility, sometimes even just standing back and watching. This is one thing I love to do when I go into a new facility is I just like to stand back, kind of kind of blend into the into the background a little bit and just see how people are experiencing the facility. Where are they going? You know, what what is drawing them to certain areas? Um, I also think talking to your team is a great way because they interact with their, your guests all the time. So whether it's the, the the person at the front desk or you've got a you've got a snack bar or you've got other people that are interacting with your with your guests, talk to your team, see what they're saying and what kind of things they're noticing about the guest experience. Um, and something I think the, the restaurant industry does well, when they do it well, are things like, you know, table touches. I mentioned, you know, going out and talking to people, but, you know, you, you, you go up and like in a restaurant, they kind of touch the table literally and, and ask how things are going and, you know, find out if there's anything that people need. And just kind of doing that on a regular basis gives you a good pulse check. And I know it can be, it'd be hard because it takes time to do that but i also also think it's incredibly valuable when you think about how you're going to move your business forward you have to know what the the guests are expecting you have to know what they're liking and what they're not liking so um, i think there's lots of different areas where you can get data you can also obviously look online right reviews and and you know what people are saying on facebook about you after their visit yeah i, I love that you mentioned the table touches i think it is something that 
in our space, something we can learn from our friends in the restaurant industry uh, in doing that. So, okay, you, you've got me hooked. I've made the decision. I'm going to partner with somebody like an amusement advantage or someone to measure that guest experience so I have some quantifiable data. In your experience, what's the frequency? How often should I be doing that as a small business? For me, it really depends on how robust that data is. So for example, if you're doing table touches, you should be doing that every single day that you're in the facility. Um, if you are talking to your team, you know, maybe once a week, you know, at, at a meeting, you're asking your team what you're seeing. Obviously, you could do that more frequently. Um, I think when you look at things like mystery shopping reports, they are um, detailed and they are robust. And I think if you have too much data, it can just be overwhelming and you're just going to put it in a drawer or you're going to leave it in your email inbox and you're never going to see it. So, you know, every couple of weeks, maybe once a month, you know, for something like that. Um, I think it is important, though, to look at all those things in combination with with each other so if you've got a, a once a month or once every couple of weeks mystery shopping report and then you've got your table touches and then you've got your input from your team again let's look at all the trends what are the the things that people are saying so if you see on your your mystery shopping report that your bathrooms were were dirty right which is a huge um you know detractor when people talk about guest experience the bathrooms being dirty so if you see that on your mystery shopping report and then you go around, you talk to people, and they're saying, you know, your bathrooms could really use some attention. And your team members are saying, hey, we don't have the right supplies to keep the bathrooms clean. Well, you know you've got an issue there. So you're looking all of that together and looking for those trends. Um, so I think, you know, if I go back to what I kind of mentioned in the beginning, it just depends on the, the detail and the, um, uh, the depth of that data that would, to me, kind of determine how often you should get it because you ultimately you want to use it right and you're going to have a, a little piece of data that you can probably implement quickly the bigger ones you need a little bit more time to kind of absorb yeah that's a good point so you mentioned about data and possibly having too much data it could be a kind of analysis paralysis or paralysis by analysis uh, so in your experience what are some categories that we should measure maybe some of our viewers today are not familiar with mystery shopping or utilizing a service you know what what categories should we measuring what what's the right categories to be looking at yeah i think for any business that you have guests coming in, there's a couple of ones that really stick out to me. Um, number one is safety, right? Do people feel safe when they come in? Are there trip hazards? Uh, again, are the bathrooms clean? Um, that also goes into cleanliness, right? So safety and cleanliness to me absolutely go hand in hand. When someone walks in to any facility and they see that it's dirty, they're gonna associate that with how safe it is. So um, I think those two are paramount. I mean, you have to be measuring, you have to be looking at how safe your facility is and how clean it is. I think those are those are two that really um, jump out as, as um, uh, really important to begin with. But then I think you also want to measure and look at, you know, the, the experience that they have with team members. So what was that experience like when you went up and, and got your shoes and, you know, went to the snack bar or whoever you got to interact with? What was that experience like? And then if I would add one more, it's kind of the overall ex experience or overall feeling that you get when, when people walk in. Is it upbeat? Is it kind of fun? Is it exciting? You know, are there lights and music and cool colors? Or does it look like the last remodel was in the 60s? So I think if, if I were to kind of start, if, if people hadn't, you know, kind of measured the guest experience before, I would start with those four things. Safety, cleanliness, team member interactions, and then overall sort of uh, atmosphere. Yeah, four great things to get started with there, Matt. So I want to dive in a little bit on this topic of cleanliness, because it does, you know, you mentioned safety and cleanliness are kind of one and two, and, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And this topic of cleanliness in the bowling industry, it's something that I, I think even for, for all out-of-home entertainment was something that's always been important, right? I mean, we've, we've always strived to have uh, clean facilities, but in this world we live in now, in this post-pandemic world we live in, it's taken on even a new meaning. You get the chance to travel the country, you work with a lot of different brands and, and different uh, facets of the entertainment industry. What are some things you're seeing now? What role does cleanliness play in kind of this post-pandemic environment that we're all a part of? Well, I think you're absolutely right that cleanliness has always been something we should be paying attention to and something that the guests value. Um, whether they're walking into a bowling center 
Universal Studios, Six Flags, or Home Depot. I think that you know they they value that cleanliness no matter where they're going. What I'm seeing now is that there are different levels of the I don't want to say expectation, but different levels of what people feel about how clean a place is. For example, there are some people that will still wear a mask, you know, for maybe their own health reasons. There are still people that will go to the grocery store and still wipe down the carriage or, you know, be more conscious of that. I've been to a, a number of amusement parks and I have to say that during the, you know, the first uh, weeks after the, the, you know, the initial opening of a lot of those parks, they were wiping down the, the, the carriages of the rides, you know, after every cycle. Now it's, you know, I don't think a lot of people are expecting that anymore. Um, but where I think we have to continue to be diligent is when people do have a heightened sense of cleanliness for themselves and they're making a decision for their for their family, we absolutely have to respect that. And if someone says, you know, I'd really like it if you wipe these these seats down, well, we should wipe them down, right? I mean, we should we should do those things. Or if they say, you know, I noticed that you know the the hand sanitizer is empty, and maybe nobody has asked for hand sanitizer in six months. We'll fill up the hand sanitizer. You know, th those those bottles are still out there everywhere. So I think that's where I'm seeing the the um, the respect has to be there for what the guests are looking for from a cleanliness standpoint. I think, like I said, a lot of people have kind of gone back to kind of pre-pandemic. I'm just going to get on the ride or go in and you know trust that it's clean and hope that it is. But I think we still have to have respect for people that are looking for something a little bit more um, clean to their standard, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, what, what I heard you saying, and it makes perfect sense, is as an owner, an operator, a manager, it doesn't matter the lens that I look through and how I view cleanliness. It really matters the lens of the, of the guests coming in. And, you know, we just probably have this spectrum now wider than ever because of the, the, of the pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's I think, what, what um, I see as well, is that spectrum is really wide, whereas during the pandemic, I think most people were in kind of the same boat, right? But now you've got people that are like, well, who cares, whatever, right? <laughs> and then there's some people that are still very diligent about it. Yeah. It could be divisive, but, but we don't have to let it be in, in measuring that. So, Matt, before we let you get away, I've got one more question for you, just to kind of we have wrap this up, is, okay, we've done all these steps. We've taken your advice. We've measured the four areas. We've partnered with Amusement Advantage. We're getting that monthly kind of feedback. Now, what do we do with the data? Is it a carrot? Is it a stick? Does it go in a drawer? I mean, how do we wrap this all up and say, what do we do with it? I really hope it doesn't go in a drawer. That's the first thing. Um, and you're right, we have to do something with this. So what I would, would kind of uh, recommend to people is take a look at what sort of the, the immediate needs are. For example, we go back to the bathroom. If you're seeing from all your data that people think your bathrooms are nasty and you go in and you're like, eh, it's not that bad. To your point, it's not your lens that matters. It's your guest lens that matters. So what is it about that? Like when you walk in, it may look very good, but does it pass the sniff test, right? So what is it that you can you can look at, you know, relatively um, quickly or something that a lot of people are kind of talking about that you can you can have some some impact on? I think when you look at carrot versus stick, sometimes it's hard to use that stick when it happened a while ago, right? So what I would prefer to do is look at those trends again and figure out, okay, what do we need to do to either continue the positive things that we're doing? So again, if BART was great on you know X, X day and we can look at that day and say, well, here's why. Um, you know, a certain manager was on duty that day and they get along really well and, you know, they just make a great team. But on this other day, Bart was with this other manager and, you know, they kind of butt heads and it's, it's not a great relationship. Well, let's take a look at that relationship, right, and figure out how we can, we can make that a better relationship so that Bart can perform at a high level on, on each one of those days. So I think it's just taking a look at you know, what are those areas you can attack first and always be making some sort of progress, right? You don't have to address everything at once. So just take a look at those things that you can address, get your team involved. I think that's another, you know, a great way to kind of keep people engaged and say, here, here are our shopping reports. Here's what you've said. Here's what I've learned from our table touches. What do you guys think we should do about this? And then uh, get, them, get them engaged and involved. And that will help you move forward and continue to move forward. 
Good. Great insight. Well, Matt, uh, great insight on all those items. Can't thank you enough for your time. We know you're busy. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you, Bart, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. It was great chatting with you. Awesome. So, hey, folks, as we wrap up another edition of the Bowling University Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next time for another great episode. If you'd like to uh, get more information on measuring the guest experience with Amusement Advantage, you can connect with them by calling the number on your screen or email bpaa at amusementadvantage.com. Now, if you'd like to connect with Matt for more information, you can visit the website at performanceoptimist.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. The Profit Break is content available when you want it, and we have new episodes premiering every month. Until then, I'm Bart Berger, and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time. Yeah.